Hey guys, I'm Trope. Welcome back to the Smoke Pit. Today, we're going to talk about the Commandant's humility, drill instructors returning to the fleet, and raising standards for staff NCOs. So the Marines Instagram put up this picture about uh, how General Neller stole Christmas. I don't know why there was a Christmas story that was published in July, but whatever. Anyway, it links to another article that's past the meme, which I think most people ignore and just went straight for making fun of the meme. Mostly inquiring about when regulations okay to wear your sunglasses in your breast pocket. He's a camera he can do what he wants, right? But anyway, that article is called Humility Enables Empathy. Let's read just a snippet of it. Apparently this was in Iraq in 2006. It was Camp Fallujah. It was cold. It was wet. It was rainy. I just got up in the morning. Overnight they had put up all this Christmas stuff and the Frosty the Snowman and Santa Claus, Rudolph, and all little green trees and lights and I'm like, shouting, who did this? Why are you doing this? I don't want to be here for Christmas, and this is reminding me that I'm here. Take it all down. Now, apparently at this point, a female sergeant told him, and I quote, General, you need to knock that shit off. I don't want to listen to any of that whiny shit. We're here. It's Christmas. We're your family. We're not going to go home, so suck it up, sir. Apparently after that, General Nell was taken back, and he apologized. He said, yes, ma'am, you are correct. I am sorry. This is my family for Christmas, and I will do my very best to have as good of Christmas as I can. I guarantee goddamn to you, if a male Marine said that to him, the stripes would have been lost. But that's not the point of the article. But anyway, apparently the Commandant, General Robert Neller, exhibits humility. A gleaming example of this is when he was asked how he could judge people for their tattoos. To which he responded, and I quote, I don't judge them, I just don't want them being Marines. Now, going off of that quote right there, I'm just going to assume that while he was in high school or college, someone with tattoos fucked his girlfriend. I mean, isn't that why all prejudice exists? Someone fucked your girlfriend, and then now you hate everyone that's like that? I think that's safe to assume. What I like the most about this is that, due to his policies, he's kicking out well-qualified Marines that he has stated in other places that he wants to keep in the Marine Corps because of ink in their skin. Now, he's defended this a lot with that we're not a biker gang or that we're not a rock and roll band. Now, what I would like to know is what artificial ink placed in someone else's skin, what effect that has on their ability to shoot, move, and communicate and survive in combat. Wait, hold on. Let me guess. If we get rid of tattoos, sexual assault and binge drinking will also stop. That's how that works, right? General Neller, since you're in charge of the Marine Corps right now, why don't you do something that will actually affect proficiency in the United States Marine Corps? Like, just to start off, why don't we raise the standards for being a staff and COR and officer? And I'm not talking about PT and education. Why don't we start promoting off merit, or performance, or maybe even character, instead of how many pull-ups somebody can do and what they look like in uniform? Or how about we stop giving extra credit for B-billets? I mean, I know the Corps has a hard-on for drill instructors, and that drill instructors are a crucial part in making Marines. But more often than not, drill instructors are a detriment to their unit when they get back to the fleet. Firstly, I'll mention that they've been out of the MOS for three or four years and have no idea what's going on anymore on the technical side of things. Because, you know, things change. The world evolves, as does the way things are done. And this person is now putting a staff and CO billet because they're a staff and CO. And they've done nothing that has to do with that MOS for the last at least three years. That and if for whatever reason they still retain a little bit of technical knowledge about their MOS, they don't integrate back into actually being a functional Marine or a functional leader. For the most part, they're mentally stuck in the drill field. And that will lead to them treating all of their subordinates in the exact same manner, private to staff sergeant. And seeing as how NCOs are the backbone of the Marine Corps, your backbone doesn't work if you don't use it. That and the amount of micromanaging they do hinders productivity, strains confidence and trust in the chain of command. And it makes junior Marines less effective because they won't want to perform for their boss. Notice I did not use the word leader there. That and considering the first thing a Marine hears when he gets to the fleet is forget everything you learned in boot camp, SOI, your MOS school, or whatever it was, because we're going to teach you how it's actually done here. I think it's a fair argument to make that drill instructors are more of a hindrance once they return to the fleet than they benefit anything in the Marine Corps. Which is why I would suggest that we make drill instructor an MOS you move into, much like EOD where once you go, you don't come back. Also, while we're talking about staff and COs, how about we alter the fraternization regulations and orders? You know, like, uh, how about, and this is just a suggestion, we make it to where a staff and CO, or actually anybody, is pursuing a sexual relationship with someone of lesser rank, that um, we make the higher ranked individual the same rank as the lower ranked individual, and that way they can be together. That or, you know, you guys can keep turning a blind eye and then those guys can conveniently retire when they're caught fucking a Lance Corps will be on their wives back. And now to the officers. Look, I've met some stellar fucking officers. Ste like, absolutely amazing. People I would follow into fucking hell and back. And I wanna say that maybe all but four of them were prior enlisted. You know, they learned how to do their jobs 
and conduct themselves as leaders when they were junior marines and NCOs before they got for training. Did you know that the reason for the disparity between officers and enlisted derives from medieval practices where the nobility would be given a host of men, usually conscripts, to command? Originally, an officer had to prove themselves by, you know, owning land or having money or certain uh, political power. Hell, up until World War I, if you had the right political connections, you could join the army as a colonel. You could have no experience and just go straight into it. I mean, things have changed now. All you need to lead 30 men into combat is a four-year degree at a community college in kindergarten finger painting. How exactly is that person qualified to lead the people they do? I mean, sure, yeah, they went to OCS, but you could send anyone to that. I mean, we send everyone to schools for everything anyway. Aren't officers taught their jobs at MOS schools too? And before you tell me it has something to do with college and leadership and all that dumb bullshit, may I remind you that the people that work on nuclear reactors on the Navy's fucking battleships, they're all enlisted. So what I'm taking from this is uh, leading 30 dudes into combat is more mentally strenuous than working on a nuclear reactor. I mean, barring surgeons, lawyers, or other likewise possessions where years of education and training goes into making someone proficient, I think everyone should start off as enlisted. Then again, surgeons and chaplains are already a naval function. We should just make the Jags that too. And then that way, everyone can start off as a private. And then their date of rank as a private starts the day they get to the fleet, not boot camp. And then that first day in the fleet is also when their four years starts. And then we should get rid of service limitations so you can just stay whatever rank you want to for as long as you want. I mean, if someone's good at doing what they do at a certain rank, why get rid of them just to fill their boots in with someone who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing? Is there a rhyme or reason, some type of revolving door that necessitates the constant turnover? Anyway, once you know what it's like being the person that does all the grunt work, and how to effectively be part of a team, at your four-year mark, if you're accepted for early enlistment, that's when you would get pinned corporal. And then two years later, when you've proven you can be an effective leader, you can either apply or get selected to go to OCS. But that's just my suggestion. Then again, that would also prevent shitheads, who don't know how the military actually works, from hindering the performance of those who are doing the work. Also, since we're talking about radical change, the uh, junior marines on their first enlistment should all live on the first deck of the barracks which would be an open squad bay. I guarantee you that that would stop 99% of sexual assaults and alcohol-related incidences in the barracks. Notice I did not say segregate the junior marines by gender. Anyway, corporals would live with a roommate on second deck, and then sergeants have their own room up on third. That way, the in-house leadership always has its eyes on what's going on with their marines. Also notice that I didn't say single. You can get married and have kids when you get the fuck out. You know, unless you want your males to keep marrying fat chicks and strippers or if you want your females to keep marrying your fucking gunnery sergeants. But hey, that's just my two cents. And for those of you watching this at home, leave a comment down below, let me know what you think, and we'll talk about that later.